Okay, in this video I'm just going to set up a, um, a two-person single trigger and by that I mean um, I'm going to set it up so that this trigger requires two people to be touching it in order to, um, uh, to fire off uh, what we want the trigger to do in Kismet. Uh, so I'll just open up Kismet and um, uh, I might just organize things a little bit better so I will um, add some comments uh, around these networks and I will call this Bill and Bob Setup and this little section here uh, I'll call this Red Blue Color Switching Okay, so with those um, organized a little bit better, uh, I might come in here and select my switch. And I'm going to choose a, uh, actually I'm going to come down to new event using trigger 2, touch. Let's zoom in. Now, um, this is um, this setup, this two-person trigger, is going to be uh, a modification of an old trigger setup that we used to use um, for doors that would open and close. And uh, what we uh, what was required was um, if the door was um, touched, the door would open. Uh, and if it was untouched, the door would close. But if uh, two characters were touching the door and one uh, untouched, one left the uh, trigger area, the door would close and the person in the touched zone uh, might get caught in the door or it might sort of... Um, at, a, at any rate it wasn't it wasn't um, very good for for the sort of the gameplay of the um, of a level and so um, this sort of thing was um, developed in order to count the number of people who are touching the door or, or touching the trigger and uh, when that number uh, r goes back to zero then the door would close and that was a way to stop uh, people being left in the uh, in the doorway uh, when it closes uh, so we've changed it slightly uh, so that now um, it counts the number of people who are touching this trigger and when that number reaches uh, two um, then it fires off uh, whatever it is that we want this trigger to activate. So uh, the first thing that I need is I'll come down to math and add int because we are storing the number of players uh, touching this as an integer. Uh, so I'm just going to plug that um, t plug touched into add int. I'm going to plug untouched into subtract int. So um, this means whenever anybody comes into the trigger area they will add to the um, to the integer and uh, when anybody leaves the trigger they will subtract from the integer. Um, now the integer in question I'm just going to create a new int variable um, just right clicking on that int result. I'm just going to bring that down here. Now, um, this uh, integer is what is going to be checked to see if it adds up to two, or as in there are two characters touching the trigger. Um, and uh, the flow for this um, network is going to be when uh, somebody touches this trigger, uh, it will actually um, check this number, um, it will, um, or it will load this number um, into this uh, function. It will then add whatever we put in B or we will add 1 to that number and then it will restore that number back in the same integer. And so uh, having said that we need to uh, put A um, into this integer so it knows where to get this, um, this integer from in the first place. And uh, instead of uh, plugging a new integer object variable of 1 into B, uh, I can just come down here to value B and I'll add 1 here. Uh, and likewise we want the same thing to happen in reverse when we untouch this trigger. So we'll um, 
take the integer result, so whatever happens here gets stored back in this integer. And the first thing that it's going to do is uh, load up this integer and subtract whatever is in B. And so uh, again, we will bring one uh, into, um, uh, we'll put one in, into value B. Now, in order to determine whether we have enough people uh, touching the trigger to activate it, uh, we need to um, use a comparison, uh, compare int, uh, and I'm just going to plug the add int into this uh, compare integer or compare int uh, because. Um, uh, once we add the int, uh, that's when um, uh, it could go up to two characters. If um, uh, if we're subtracting, then uh, we've only really got one character in there anyway, so we won't be firing off from, from this one um, to this comparison. Now the number that we're going to be checking is... Virus database has been updated. I swear I'm, I'm not uh, getting any money to advertise um, a vast virus um, checker. It just pops up every now and then. Um, now, uh, with the uh, compare int, uh, it's going to check um, this value, uh, value A, um, and uh, value B, we're going to set that manually to 2. And so when this integer reaches 2, in other words, two people are touching the trigger, um, this A equals equals B is going to fire off. Um, I will add uh, one uh, little thing to A is less than B. Um, I just want to tell the player uh, what they're doing wrong and why they need a, a, or tell them that they need another character in order to touch it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to new action, miscellaneous and log. And we are going to plug A is less than B into the log. And we are going to say this trigger requires two people to activate. Just to give the player some idea of, um, uh, uh, of what is actually required of them. And uh, so what are we going to do when A does equal B, when we do have two players uh, touching the trigger? Well, for now, I just want some sort of visual representation of, um, uh, of it doing its job. And so for that, I'm going to um, make sure that my trigger is still selected. And I'm going to also select this uh, toggleable light and this interp actor. Now, the reason why uh, they must be toggleable lights and interp actors, um, more than just the fact that we are changing the, um, the values of these things, is that um, we cannot kill out a static mesh and we cannot kill out static lighting. And so um, in, for all, in order for us to get rid of all of these things, we need them to be the sorts of um, dynamic style objects. So um, interp actors, uh, toggleable or movable lights, um, these are the things that, that we need in order to be able to kill them out. And so I'm just going to come in here and go to a new action, um, actor destroy. I'm going to plug that into A equals equals B. And with the uh, target, I'm just going to right click on that. And I'm going to create new object vars using trigger2 dot dot dot, which is all of the things that I have selected. And there we go. And now um, it should be that when we um, have two players on this trigger, uh, we kill out all of these things. So in the next video, uh, I'll be testing that out and uh, we'll see if it works.